When you first open Onshape, it will take you to the home screen. Now the important part about this is the left bar. So basically this shows you where to find all of your projects. But before we can find a project, we need to create one. So this is done by hitting the create button in the top left and then selecting document. So now we can name our document. So we're gonna call this one box as we're recreating a simple hinge box. Now another important part to note is the document location. So this is basically after we save it, we can find it in the owned by me, which means you can come over here, select this button and it should pop up as one of them. So now that we know where to find it and we have named it, we can hit the create button at the bottom. Now before we can start designing, we need to know how to navigate our workspace. This can be done by clicking and dragging to move this box around. We can also use the scroll bar to scroll in and out of our design. Another thing to note is this box located in the top right, which you can use to locate everything. So you hit the back, it'll show you the back. If you hit the corner, it'll show you the corner of our design and everything else. Now we can actually start designing. So we're gonna hit the top on our box and then we're gonna select this plane. So you see how it highlights it? It shows us it's selected. It also highlights it over here to the left. Now this box is pretty much a roadmap to our entire design. So whether we create a sketch, extrude it or anything, everything will pop up here for easy access later on. Now there's also this top menu, which allows us to find all the tools we will need necessary for designing. So for the first one, we're gonna use what's called a sketch. You can see this blue outline shows us that we're in it. This box also pops up. This pretty much tells us all the information about the thing that's currently open. So now that we have a sketch, our tools up here have changed. So now that we're creating a box, we want to find a rectangle. So if we come up here and we look at our toolbox, we can see that there's an arc, there's a circle, and a square. But we're going to select a square. So if you hit the down arrow, there are a couple different ways to do this. We're going to use the center point rectangle. So once we selected it, it'll stay highlighted to show you that you have it. You then can come and hit the origin. Once you hit the origin, you just drag out and you have your rectangle. Now it doesn't really matter where you put it, just click somewhere random, and as you can see, it becomes shaded to confirm the sketch. Now important part about 3D modeling is that you can use it anywhere. So to make sure it's accurate, we use what's called a dimension. So if you come to the toolbar and you see this little arrow thing, a dimension, with the shortcut D, you select it, and then you come down and select your line, which you can tell you're on it when it highlights. You click your line, and then you simply drag up. You then click again, and you see you can edit your dimensions. So we're going to delete what's currently in it, and we're going to put 50. Now, if you hit enter, it shrinks your box to 50. But another thing to note is that it doesn't always shrink everything to the exact proportions. So that means you're going to have to do it to the other side. So you're going to come over here, we're going to click, we're going to drag out, and we're going to make this one 50 as well. And now we have a box that's 50 by 50 millimeters. Now that we've finished our sketch, we can save it. This is done by hitting the green check mark on our box over here. So we hit check. We can also see that a sketch shows up over here. So as I said, it's the roadmap. So if we want to come back and later edit the sketch, we can simply come and click on it. Now it's 3D. So we want to make it from a sketch to something that we can actually use. So this is done by using an extrude, which is found up here in the top toolbar. It looks like a smaller box and a larger box. So you're going to click on it and you have this little thing pop up. We are then going to go and click on our surface as seen. So we have a depth of 25 millimeters. So this is basically saying that now this box is 25 millimeters thick. So if you want to edit this as the bottom of our box, we don't need it 25 millimeters. So we're going to come over here and we're going to set it to three. If you hit enter, you can see it shrink to three millimeters. Then we go and we hit the check mark to save it. And we have our little box. Another really useful part about Onshape is being able to make measurements. So if you come and select one corner and then select the other corner, it shows you the measurements down here in the bottom right. So if you hit this tape measure for details, you can see all the millimeters between your points. Now this is really useful for a lot of other shapes, but it's not necessarily for a square. Now that we have a square, we want to design an actual box. So what we're going to do is we're going to start another sketch and then we're going to select our surface. So now we're going to come up and we're going to come to the tool named offset. If you have a slot, simply hit the arrow and select the offset. We're then going to scroll in and select every corner of the box. Now, as you see, the offset is outside, which will actually cause a ton of errors for a sketch. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions given by the cursor and left tap. And as you see, the positive 5 is outside, so we're going to set it to a negative. 
then we're going to extrude it in three millimeters so our box has the same depth on all sides. Simply hit enter to save your thing and then you're going to hit the check. And now we have our sketch on top of the other box. Now that we have our sketch, let's extrude it to make it into a box. So what we're going to do is we're going to come and select our surface. So be careful not to select the inside box, but select the outer rim. We're then going to come and extrude it again. We're going to leave it at the default 25 millimeters this time. So then we're simply going to hit the check, and that's all we have to do for this step. Now that we have a box, we're going to work on making it actually hinged. So what we're going to do is we're going to start yet another sketch. So we're going to select a side of the square, hit sketch, and then we have it ready. So instead of using a rectangle like we did for the base of the square, we're going to come up here and we're going to use a center point circle. We're then going to come down, click, and drag out. Now make sure to only click the circle once. This is so we can set the dimensions. So you see how the numbers are in white? This means we can simply click a number. So if I click 6, it automatically goes to fix the dimensions. So once you have your dimensions set, you can hit enter and you're good to go. So the thing is blue and this is because it's not set, which means we can drag and drop our circle anywhere in the square, which is a bad design flaw because we need pieces to fit together. So how we're going to fix this is we're going to do more dimensions. So we're going to select the center of the circle, the side of the square, and do a dimension. The circle is still blue because we can drag it this way. So we're going to do yet another one. So we're going to drag to the center of the circle, and then we're going to do the other side wall. Now if you see how the circle is black, this means we can't drag it anywhere, which is good. So now we're going to save our sketch with the check mark. Now that we have our sketch, we're going to extrude it. So we're going to come and we're going to click on the circle. We're then going to come up here and select our extrude button and set the depths. So what we're going to do is we're going to label this one as 3 millimeters, hit enter, hit the check, and now we have a little knob. But it's a hinge, so we have to do it to both sides. So we're going to come over here to the other side, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Now let's introduce you to another tool. So if you come up here, there's this thing called a fillet, and it pretty much rounds out all your corners to give you a smoother look. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the corners we want round. Now this is a little bit much of a curve, so we're going to set the radius to a smaller circumference. All right, now another part we want to fill it is the actual hinge part so that we can snap it on easier after we print. So we're going to set this one to one millimeter and save this. So now we have finished this portion of our design. Now we can start working on the lid to our box. So we're going to come to the bottom left corner of our screen and hit the plus. We then can create a part studio. So part studio is what we are in right now. It lets you design things from scratch, where assembly is where you put them together. We're going to have the exact same starter steps as we did for the other one. So we're going to go to the top, select the plane, and start a sketch. We're then going to start another rectangle, select the origin, and drag out. Now, since we set our dimensions in the other one, we can make sure that the lid fits the box by setting both sides to 50. Then we save our sketch and we extrude. So we're going to hit the extrude button, we're going to select our surface, and we're going to extrude this one by 3 so that all our parts have the same depth. Now that we have our shape, the hard part begins. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a side of the square. We're then going to start another sketch. Now instead of using the same rectangle we used last time, we're going to use a corner rectangle. So we're going to select it, and we're going to come to the corner of our shape, which is highlighted by a yellow dot. We'll click, and we'll drag down. Remember to click again to save your shape. We're then going to draw another circle. 
Now remember the circle we drew last time had a diameter of 6.6, .6, but since we want them to snap together, we're going to give this one a little bit larger diameter. Now if we think back to our other shape, we had the circle 6 millimeters from the top, so we'll do the exact same thing here. We also had it 6 millimeters from the back, so we'll do that again. But as you see, our circle isn't exactly center, so let's work on that. Alright, so now that we have our sketch, we're going to save it, and we're going to extrude. Now when you're extruding, make sure to extrude both portions, or you won't really have a connection point. So we're going to set it in 3 millimeters, and we're going to save. Now that we have one side done, we have to do the other side. Like with the box, we did it by hand, but there is an easier way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the opposing side and click the same sketch, Sketch 2. See how it brings back our sketch? We then can highlight it by clicking and dragging down. We'll then come to somewhere off the plane and double click. We can then hit copy sketch. And then we're good. So we're going to save that sketch. And we're going to start a new sketch on this side. So now we get to paste our sketch. So double click and hit paste. And we're good. So now we're going to follow the instructions by the cursor and left click. But you see how it isn't right where we want it? We can fix that by using dimensions. So we're going to click the corner of the square and the corner of the square. And we're going to set it to zero. And there we go. So I don't think we copied it exactly, so we're going to add another dimension just to make sure our circle is right. And there we go. We're going to save it and extrude it by three to match the other one. Now we want to come in and add some fillets. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the curves we want to be rounded. And we're going to save. Now since these pieces are snapping together, starting another fillet, making it smaller, and putting it on the insides of the circle will make assembly easier. Now we're going to save. That's the basics of our lid. Now that we have designed the basics of all our parts, we can assemble them. So we're going to do that by coming to the bottom tab, and we're going to hit the assembly. Now this is where we put all our design pieces together, but to do that we have to put them into the studio somehow. We do that by coming to the top left and hitting the insert button. We then see that this is in the current document, so everything in our document can be inserted. So we're going to tap the box, and we're going to tap the lid. We're then going to click anywhere random because we can drag them and we want them to stay. And then we're going to come and pick the check mark. Alright, but now we want to actually assemble them. Right now they're two separate parts so we can drag one and they don't move together. Also, how are you supposed to really position it on top of each other precisely? Well, that's where the mate comes. So we use what's called a fasten mate to connect two objects. So we're going to click on it. We're then going to select the two objects and where we want them to fasten. So we're going to select the outside of our lid and the outside of our box. And they're together. So now we can hit the check. So now, if we drag them around, they're all together. But this is a hinge, so we can actually go in and adjust our fasten. So we can do this by selecting the fastened up here and selecting the revolute. So what we do is we select it, and then we save this. So you can't really tell much has happened, except for the fact that if I now select the lid and move it with the arrows, the box can actually open. So what we use this for is to tell for clearance. And if you look at the back of our box, it can't actually open because the lid will hit the box. So for the lid, we're going to come to the back to where we know it will hit the box. What we're going to do is instead of a fillet, we're going to use a chamfer, which is just a little bit more of a cut. We're going to come and we're going to click on our curve, and it goes down. Here we're going to adjust it to a 3mm. 
Now we also need to change it in our box. So we're going to come back to our box and we're going to find the back. We're going to add another chamfer. We're going to set this one at a 5. So now, if we want to, we can drag the chamfer up to fix our fillets. So now we can fillet this curve as well. All right, and then we're good to go. So now if you look at it, we can open with clearance. So all that's left is to import it into the slicer, print it, and assemble.